What is going on everyone? Trust the buzz here. If you are new to the channel, just know I make daily Charlotte Hornets content. So if that interests you, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. If you cannot tell by the thumbnail or the title of this video, the Charlotte Hornets lose their final summer league game to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, I actually forgot the score. What was it? 89-86, I believe. I literally just watched the end of the game and then came sat down here and record. But um, yeah. Uh, I was gonna, this game took so many turns. So at first I was gonna be like, hey, this team looks really good. And then I was gonna be like, hey, it's still okay. It's summer league at the end of the day. Calls aren't going their way. And it kind of just looked lazy with the ball. Then the fourth quarter happened. And then it was like, this team is so like talented that they were able to come back and they finally, look what happens when they put pressure on, like when they play with some intensity. And then Kai Jones. So I've said time and time and time again on this channel that Kai Jones physically and just basketball skill set wise, while he still has development, you know, he there's things about his game that he needs to develop. Those are, I'm fine where he's at um, as far as basketball skill set and just his natural athleticism and just his worth that could work work ethic can get that out um i'm fine with that i'm fine with those things of where they're currently at in this stage of his career second year uh 21 years old what i'm not okay with at all is his basketball iq he continuously tries to go up on four people he continuously tries to do what he did at the end of that game which was i got the ball there's three or four uh, members of the other team down here and I only have one guy off in the corner and I'm going to try to cross up a guard who yeah he's smaller than you but he's still quick I mean you know what I mean so it's just like yeah like, even if you were able kind of able to get that move off he's still gonna be he you weren't gonna be able to get that shot off especially we had way too much time on the clock and that's one thing that Kai Jones has to work on and I have a, I, like in my head, I have a video where I want to talk about that and talk about if Kai Jones is deserving of minutes. And I can tell you right now, in that video, I'm just going to talk about that. He, as unfortunate as it is, at the end of the day, it's just Summer League, so it really doesn't matter. As unfortunate as it is, Kai Jones needs to be put in more of those situations. So Summer League, it doesn't matter, but that was good for him that he messed up at the end because his teammates can get on his butt and be like, you can't do that. Coaches can get on his butt, you can't do that. And then maybe he'll stop actually doing it, but putting him in the Summer League um, and G League, those games don't necessarily matter. So he feels like he can just do things like that. But in the NBA, if he does things like that in the NBA, you're benched for a couple of games, especially with Steve Clifford. Or Mel, like we've seen guys like Melo, Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward feel a certain type of way when the game is in reach and somebody messes up. Kai Jones needs that, and I and I'm not a coach, so there may be other, there may be better ways to get that through a young player's head that they can't do things like that. But from what I know and just how I've seen things, you got you can either bench him or you can like get the players to get on him. But that's not gonna happen in G League and Summer League if that makes any sense. You know what I mean? And not to take away, we're gonna talk about like other guys on the team, but I just wanna talk about this about Kai Jones real quick. That doesn't take away from those guys, but Kai Jones needs to be put in these situations where what he does, those boneheaded mistakes, cost the team a game. And it's unfortunate, I don't want that to happen, but I just currently, I just currently feel like there's no other way he's gonna learn. Because he does this all the time. He did it last year. You would think that he, I would, I mean, he's strong and things like that. I wouldn't, I mean, and he's like a highlight player. I would. I didn't expect going to summer league, he wouldn't just do that at all. But he still does it way too much. And he doesn't, it's not like he's playing that many minutes. You know, everybody's playing like topping out like 25 minutes, 26. Maybe this game they played a little more minutes because of um, they were trying to come back. But it's just these things can't happen and so like i said i'm gonna talk about the other guys but kai jones other than that he had a really great game um I, he as much as we say he should be at the four defensively he still hasn't learned how to play the four he plays up a little too high on like every possession when he needs to learn how to kind of just scour the paint uh like mark williams um and speaking of that we'll go into talking about mark williams Mark Williams is exactly what the Hornets need. I know offensively his game isn't the best still. He looked better tonight or today, however you want to see it. 
However, there were times where uh, I feel like he went the wrong way. So like, he would back someone down and he would, instead of turning around and going towards baseline, he would go right into the middle of like the paint. And I will say that there was like two or three defenders there because other players crashed down. So he doesn't get that chance to move. So if that's his favorable side, which I'm assuming it is, I haven't like looked enough to know, but he does that a lot. So if that's his favorable side, you can't come crashing down on that side. But at the same time, Mark Williams needs to learn to use his other hand as well. Um, so there's those things he can work on offensively. It's gonna get easier and easier from him. He looks better and better and better with every game. Uh, sitting in the dunker spot worked out for him. Just being in the paint worked for him a lot. He actually had like a couple of touches in the paint and was able to move and things like that. And he's a pretty good passer. Uh, but defensively, I mean, we I, that's why I think he should be the starter, which I'm going to do a video on that as well. But Mark Williams should definitely be the starter just because of the fact that you're not getting that type of defensive just – he's in every play on defense. If they're coming inside of that paint, he's involved in that play. So – Mark Williams, fantastic job. I want to do like reviews on everybody uh, coming out the summer league, and we can get on that later. But yeah, that Mark Williams whole game, he is the defensive force that the team needs. I can't even remember if he was on the court at the end, but that's fine just because like the way that the way they were running, um, you yeah, Mark Williams can run, but he's not Kai Jones athletic, you know, when he's running. So I get it. And also the way the other team was playing, the Timberwolves was playing, they didn't really need him in the paint, especially towards the end right there. But great game for Mark Williams. I, I like, would like to see him you know, advance his offensive game a little more. However, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's summer league, he just got drafted, so I can't wait to see what he looks like going into the season. Um, I, there's just no way I don't see him starting at some point. He may not start day one, but if he's not starting by all-star break, that's a problem, to be honest, unless a trade happens or something like that, or the team tanks. I don't know. But yeah, and yeah, he's just got, he should be starting by All-Star break. Now let's move on to JT Thor. JT Thor is, this is what we saw from JT Thor last year, just glimpses in very small minutes. JT Thor looked super comfortable on offense. Uh, he had a lot of mismatches, but he was doing a good job of finding those mismatches. mismatches. He looked good handling the ball. He was a pretty good passer. His shooting was on point. His free throws weren't as bad. JT Thor, it still looked like, and I don't know how exactly to explain this, but his game doesn't look fluid. It looks like an athletic player. It, for lack of a better term, because this is the this is just the most recent person I can think of off the top of my head. How Giannis looked early, where his game wasn't fluid, but you could tell it's just he's he's dominating the way he is because he's super athletic. Now his game obviously is like more refined, and Giannis looks smooth and comfortable out there. But that's what JT store games looked like today where he was dominating he was hitting his shots but it's still like no little finesse it's just strictly athleticism and then just like a little bit of skill uh, as far as like shooting and getting to the paint and things like that but he did good I mean he's what 19 maybe 20 so I'm not tripping over that and like I said he's not Giannis I'm just using Giannis off the top of my head is the only person I can think of that like nobody has to like research or anything like that that's like his game at the beginning you could see the talent it was just all right, it's a bunch of athleticism first, and now Giannis has added finesse. So that's what JT Thor game looks like, and that's what it looked like tonight. He was getting basically anywhere he wanted. He looked great on defense. Uh, I will say that, you know, inside the paint, which he's going to play a lot more with the four, so this, that's the reason I want him to work on this. But inside the paint, he does need to work on just, like, being there in the paint and being stationary. There was too many, like, easy layups and things like that. He would put his body on them, but they were just able to, you know, just do an underhand. And, you know, he didn't contest, He wasn't able to contest it. So he does need to work on that defensively. But offensively, his game looked great. He was hitting shots. He played smart. I really like JT Thor's game. I know he's been struggling all summer league offensively. To me, I think he's been pretty good defensively. Uh, you know, some people may say different, but I think he's been really good defensively uh, this summer league but offensively is where he struggled which I don't really expect JT Thor to be that kind of offensive player but today he looked like that kind of offensive player he was just doing all the right things like I said his shot looked good he was able to get to the basket he was able to draw fouls and, I, and he's been able to draw fouls all summer league so I like that in part of his game next up we're going to talk about is uh and just real quick just shout out to JT Thor that was a really great game from you despite the loss of the team you had a really great game and you really put them back in the game if you ask me um so next we're going to move on to Bryce McGowan's this game frustrated me with Bryce McGowan's um just because of the fact that the team there was points where they were struggling and he was on the court while they were struggling and I know I don't you can tell that he wasn't being as a first of all I don't know if it's his movement when he attacks the basket or 
I don't know. And it's summer league. I'm not trying to blame refs or anything like that. But he just wasn't getting any calls. I've never seen any like almost anything like it. It's just he doesn't get any calls. And it could be just how he how he attacks the basket. He may just be a little bit too uncontrolled, so they're not going to call it. But he just I, he just doesn't get any calls. But anyway. Now, he wasn't as aggressive as you would want him to be, and, I, and it may be a good thing because the team was able to get back into the game, and so if he was going in and trying to drive and missing those shots, they could have been you know, even more out in the game. But Bryce McGowan, you're a bucket. We all know you're a bucket. He had like a late three that was big too. You're, you're a bucket. We all know that you're a bucket. However, there are times like in that game where I need you to take over. And uh, he didn't necessarily do that, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. It is summer league, but that is like kind of the position where I would want to see Bryce McGowan take over. If James Booknight was there, I, same way for him since he's a bucket. Though that's the type of thing I want to see him to be able to take over in those moments. Um, so that's one thing I look for. However, the rest of your game looked just fine. Uh, he was playing defense well. That's why he was in there for so long. Um, he really could have had a shot, but then everybody collapsed at the end on him, and he got that blocked. But, um, yeah, for sure, Bryce McGowan's, I would like for you to take over in those moments when the offense is struggling and because we've seen you just go get your bucket. And I think that was in the very first summer league game. That's what he was able to do. I would like to see a little bit of that there, but it is at the end of the day what it is. I do want to. I do want them to work on maybe his the way he attacks the back. Like I said, he's not getting any calls and he's getting bumped and swatted and everything. So I don't under. I don't quite get why he's not getting any calls. It's some league at the end of the day. Maybe that'll change if you get like NBA minutes, minutes, even G League minutes. But that is what it is. It's summer league. Like I keep saying, at the end of the day, everybody else played decent. I mean, there was times where when they turned the, when they turned the pressure up, the team started playing better. However, when the Timberwolves are able to go on that run. There wasn't anybody to kind of just help got the team on the court. And those are guys like I look for LJ Figueroa to do, Tyshawn Alexander on this specific roster to do. Um, it obviously is going to change on an actual roster. So I do wish those guys would have kind of, you know, showed their leadership a little bit because they have done in the past. And they've shown that they can be poised in those moments. So I would like to see that. They still played well, like stat-wise. Once again, unfortunately, they were not able to play as well as you would want them to. But uh, just overall presence on the court they looked a little better touchdown alexander needs to work on his like these passes these one-handed passes he just overthrows people um so he needs to work on that and then lj figueroa just needs to really i mean he finds his spots but i wish he could find his spots a little earlier in the game it's kind of like take it as you get it and he seems like a little timid at times um so sometimes you got to take it as you can get it you were 13 for 13 at the beginning of summer league and i know that's like now i'm not asking you to keep that up but like i said you could, you could take over in those minutes like that, especially with that kind of like roster. And I don't know like what's saying behind closed doors, what the coaches want and things like that. But when the offense was struggling, I wouldn't mind seeing LJ Figueroa be a little more aggressive offensively. He would just pass up. He would make smart decisions. It wasn't like he was making bad decisions, but at, on the court, you're like the best scorer at, at that certain, certain times during that run, trying to come back. So I would like to see you kind of take over. And uh, Brady Manning, Brady Manning was cool. He just can't play defense uh, at all. And, and he plays with effort. I'm not, not knocking his effort. It's just not enough. And he can he can work on that. I mean, he's young. I mean, all these guys are young. I know Brady Man is obviously a little older, but like he, he can work on that. His shooting, fine. Like you, with Brady Man, you're going to take him when they go down, or you're going to take him when they miss. But you know, most of the time, he's they're going to go down. So I'm not tripping over like his shooting and things like that. He's a smart player. He just needs to work on his defense a little bit. And he actually didn't look slow on his feet on defense. It's just he wasn't putting enough pressure on defense. And so therefore, the other team was still able to score. And, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, Jello didn't get any minutes, but I think we know what Jello is. Jello is just here to be on the team for Melo. I do think Jello deserves some time outside, and that could be it too, because they sat Nick Richards, which I'm pretty sure not going to cut Nick Richards, even regardless how I feel about him, and regardless how well Mark Williams and Kai Jones both have played. Uh, so I'm really don't know what they're going to do with Jello. Um, I, I, but I do. He's not going anywhere as far as like leaving the organization. I don't think he's going to be on another team uh, unless some other team signs him but i feel like if there's pressure for another team to sign him the hornets are gonna scoop him up like i feel like that's how that's gonna go so i'm not too concerned about jello not getting minutes i don't think it has anything to do with like the coach not liking him or he's not good or anything like that um and then what else so jalen jalen crutcher rather i always say McCrutcher, but jalen crutcher he played better um it is what it is i don't i'm not really trying to hint, hint, you know hinder on that just because i don't even know if he's gonna make the team 
Uh, and I think that's it. Like I said, JT Thor had a great game. Mark Williams had a great game defensively. Kai Jones had a great game until the end. Uh, I do need to need him to work a little better on the actual like five position on defense. Like I said, he plays a little too high. However, when he gets switched on to anybody, I love it. I love that matchup with almost anybody. Obviously, um, in the actual NBA, a little guys got a lot more guys are gonna have a little more finesse, so they're gonna be able to do some step backs and things like that. But when people try to drive on him, if they're a guard, you know, forward, wing, don't matter, he's there and he he does a good job. He just needs to work on actually like just rotating in the paint and then protecting in the paint but other than that one-on-one -on -one defense great um and yeah i mean that's really it i mean it's summer league at the end of the day the end of summer league so i know basketball news is gonna be kind of slow but don't worry i'm gonna make daily charlotte hornets content like i promised this is just a you know quick overview i don't want to talk too much about anybody because i actually want to talk about everybody everybody deserves that little own video it was a fun little thing to kind of cover this and y'all are obviously are showing out and just supporting me and that means a lot but yeah I, i'm not bad overall in summer league i mean they got better every game, and in summer league, that's all you can ask for. Returning guys who were on the team last year, like uh, JT Thor, Kai Jones, they all look good. Uh, I wish we could see some James Book night. I really would like to see that because in situations where they were struggling to score, I really would like to see him in that situation, um, and just just how his game has progressed since you know last year. We saw it like in a regular season game, he had like 24 on the Kings, so. James Book Knight can play, like, you know what I mean? So I just would like to see him summer league. However, he wasn't able to play because of injury. Scotty Lewis as well, just an all-around defensive tool. Would like to see him play, but it is what it is. I'll look out for their workouts and things like that once they heal and go from there. But overall, summer league, they got better every game. They showed, even in this game, they they, sh they started out dominant. They got a little lazy, to be honest. I don't even, and calls weren't going their way, which I don't even, that's a whole nother story. I, I don't watch every summer league game, but I've watched a few outside of the Hornets, and I don't see no lopsided calls like that. Like I said, it could just be how the Hornets players are playing. Obviously, if you're playing like too aggressive, they're not going to call the foul when it because it's probably sliding, you know, closer to an offensive foul when they attack the basket. But there was a lot of times where it should have been a foul. I think LJ Figueroa had like a deep three attempt, and he got fouled, and they didn't call it. it might even break some gallons. I don't know, but just overall weird no calls. But overall, the team just. They, from game one to game to this final game, game five, they got better every single time, and they showed different things every single time. And that's that's all I can ask for at Summer League. I'm not mad at it. Two and three is not bad. I mean, we didn't win one a single one last year, so and we were in, you know, most of these games. So I'm, I'm not mad at it. But, yeah, it's been fun. Thank you all for sticking around. And like I said, I'm still going to make daily Charlotte Hornets content. Obviously, it may not be too interesting. It's going to be, like, on more on the, like, opinionated things because there's not going to be much news except until the 20th with the Miles Bridges stuff but um yeah I'm going to do my best and hopefully y'all stay tuned and you know continuously keep talking in the comment section because I love that I love the community it seems like I have the same people comment every every single video and I love that so I really appreciate that but anyway thank you so much for watching I'll see you next time peace